Hi everyone, welcome to DIY Ideas. Today we're doing another crash course on crocheting techniques. So for today, I'll show you the very basics of the wool, a bit about the hooks, and other tools that you might need. Of course, how to hold your stuff in your hands, as well as how to start and what stitches are and how you can use them. So let's get started. First off are the hooks. So when you want to crochet, you of course need hooks or sometimes called needles. So I brought you some different ones to show you. The first one here is an 8mm needle and that's the thickest one. Then I have the 6mm one and another one in the same size. So they're usually labeled and you can see the size. This one is out of bamboo. Then some metal with a rubber handle, a plastic handle, and this one is completely out of plastic in case you prefer that one. So they have different weight of course as well, and I personally enjoy the heaviest ones or the metal ones. And I like the rubber handle because they aren't as cold when you hold it in the hand. So either way, choose whichever you personally prefer or have already at home. Then you will need scissors and a needle or multiple ones even. So these are for weaving in. So the size depends on the thickness of your wool, of course. A bigger needle is for bigger wool and a smaller for smaller wool or thinner wool. This one is dull, perfect for keeping you safe. So whatever you find will work, a regular needle will work just fine. And the scissors are no special scissors this time. You can use whichever ones you already have at home, at your disposal. Here is our wool. So this one I wanted to show you because it's super pretty and a bit different than what we usually use. So this is great for scarves and it's called Lazy Hazy Summer Cotton. It has 50 grams and 150 meters and with your yarn it's always important to see how much you need and if it's the right wool for your project. So you can ask in store or if you're doing tutorials you can usually get advice what kind of wool you should use in the tutorial itself. And if you'd like to know, a regular sized scarf would need between 100 and 200 grams of wool. So it's always great to go by that too. Also, the length here depends on the thickness of the wool. So this is for a 4 millimeter needle. So you can always see it here. It's always labeled and recommended to use a 4 millimeter hook or knitting needle. It's usually for both, so you can always think about it this way. If your thread has the doubled thickness that you see on here, then this would be heavier and therefore you'd have less length but more weight, so it would be heavier, the entire spool. So with 50 grams you would have less length, so that's what you need to take care of when you plan your projects. So the height and weight as well as the needle size matter. So this wool I'm showing you first is for a 4 millimeter needle. That's the recommended size. You can of course use different ones but this is the recommended one. A bit thinner because it's for summer. And this one here is a bit thicker so 6 to 7 millimeters. And this would be typical winter yarn so usually a lot thicker and warmer. And this is also meant for hats, for winter hats, so it means it's super cuddly and warm. So that's our second yarn for today. Here is our third one. So I wanted to show you a wool that you can use for other projects like bags in this case. So this is also cotton, somewhat thicker than a 4mm one. Let's check. Yep, it's for 5 to 7mm needles or hooks. 250 grams and 225 meters. It's 80% cotton and 20% polyester with a lovely look and I have to say lovely colors in here. So I'll show you the other two. You see the different kinds of spools that you can even find. So even those vary. 
the longer and rounder one and I like it when I can take the middle out of here so that way I can work on my projects and pull the thread from the inside. If you would pull on it from the outside then your spool would just jump around and roll away from you so that can sometimes get weird and here is the nice comparison of textures as well. So here we have 70% acrylic and 30% wool and it's 50 grams per 55 meters and the other one is longer and lighter as you can see. The weight also depends on the stuff the yarn is made out of. So the wool is heavier than cotton of course and here we have 49% cotton 46% acrylic and 5% polyester. So yeah, you can always check the specifications and the details depending on what project you're doing and what result you want in the end. So let's start with the basics. I'll show you how to hold your yarn. So here is our 6 to 7 millimeter yarn and our 6 millimeter hook is also ready. So let's get our yarn onto our needle. So take the yarn around your index and middle finger, go through with the needle between the fingers and you see the crossing here, I'm holding it with my thumb, so just pull the thread through. Take your fingers out and pull. Here is the beginning thread and the longer end. So when I pull the longer end, then you get it tighter on your needle. Super simple. You can also pull and make it looser that way. Also, I recommend not pulling it too tight on there. It'll make it easier to work with if it's a little bit looser. So let's see how we hold the rest of the yarn. Between our pinky and ring finger, then over our hand and around the index finger one more time. So this way we can also keep the tightness or looseness controlled. And here is my working thread. So now we can start with some chains. That's just taking the yarn through the little loop that you have. This stays the same as I showed you. So I'm taking the yarn with my hook through and that's it. You can keep this nice and stable with your other fingers that are free. If you pull too hard, you're going to have a harder time working with it and then it's not as fun and relaxing as it should be. So you just got to figure out which way you prefer it. So it shouldn't be too loose or too tight. So just test it out a little bit and see which way you personally prefer it. Also I have to say you get super fast in a matter of moments, it's really easy to get a hang up. So here are some chains and you see what they look like. So this would be the base of pretty much any piece you would start working on. Except when you're working with an ring. I call that a magic ring and if you'd like to see how you can do that, you can also check out my channel. I already did a couple of videos about that. So that would usually be done for winter hats or often for triangle shaped scarves. So that's also an option to start with. So 
here is what I have. So this should be good for the first basics video. Next time I'm going to show you a bit more complicated stuff and how to get started with your projects. Let me know how you found today's project, if you found it useful. And then if you enjoyed, you can stay tuned for our next video. I'll show you different kinds of stitches. So if you'd like to learn those, feel free to check that out on our channel. You can also subscribe and shoot us a thumbs up. You can comment in the comment section and I'll see you in our next project. Have a great day. Bye.